On the show today, Liberty football kicks off spring practice and we get an update on the upgrades to Williams Stadium. And we get to know the voice behind Liberty Athletics, Alan York. All that plus warm, hot, and fuego, and it starts right now. What is up? Come on in, get comfortable, settle in for another great edition of Game On. Thank you so much for tuning in. As always, he's Rhett McGibbon. I'm Matt Warner, and Bobby Bowling will check in in just a few minutes. Yeah, well, most of us across the country continue to battle the wintry weather. Yeah. Here at Liberty University, spring has begun, or at least spring football has begun. Yes, yeah, spring in name only. It helps have a spacious new indoor facility to practice in, certainly. And that's what the Flames are doing as they begin preparations for what will be a historic 2018 season. Why is it historic? Well, simple. It'll be the first year the Flames get to play as a member of the FBS. Well, they may not be bowl eligible yet, as they must first complete this transition year. It's still a huge opportunity for the Flames to kick off the FBS era with a bang. Now, you may be saying, isn't it a little early to be starting spring ball? And you're right, this is an earlier start than normal. But as Flames defensive coordinator Robert Wimberly told us, they have a good reason for it. Coach Gill made the, made the point and emphasis to the staff that he wanted to get the young men out earlier. One the biggest thing is injury prone, uh, you know, to protect our young men. If injuries would occur, that they would be able to come back earlier uh, for the season. Uh, I think the second thing was just to change it up a little bit, uh, give our young men uh, ample opportunity on the back end to get with Coach Bill Gillespie and uh, attack the weight room get ourselves in shape. So, you know, we're real excited. Uh, day one was very exciting. A lot of energy on both sides of the ball. Well, as the 2018 football season gets closer day by day, so do the improvements that are being made to Williams Stadium. And we thought there was no better person to give us an update regarding what we can expect from the updated venue than our very own Bobby Bolick. Yeah, guys. Lots of excitement going around here for the Liberty football program, obviously going to the FBS and also upgrading Williams Stadium. I thought who better to talk to than Vice President of Planning and Construction. Obviously, by the looks of it, a lot has gone on already. Tell us a little bit more of how far you guys have gone. Actually, it's kind of unique. We started this project during the season. Now that we're actually coming up out of the ground, you can start to see the framework. There's going to be a full upper deck over there, and it's going to hold another 6,000 seats. There's another, we call it the lawn seating area. Okay. And if we have a game where we really sell them out, and we hope that's every game, we can basically sell those as lawn seats, and it's going to be real nice. So. You also were, you're talking a little bit about uh, the scoreboard. Is there anything else going on with that? Any advancements? Well, it's kind of a two-phase approach. Okay. So uh, phase one is the east side and the south side. So it's going to be the upper deck, the 6,000 seats in the upper deck, the south end. We're actually going to close that end of the stadium in, kind of feel like more like a formal stadium. We're going to close the west side and make it not as open during the week. Um, but that's phase one. Phase two is actually going to be looking at the west side and getting some revisions done to the west side. So we're going to be adding in some what we call loge suites. It's kind of a new concept. Uh, it's more like a, a four or six person mini suite. I think the favorite feature that all the fans are going to like is the video board. Okay. Um, right now our video board is about 700 square feet. We're taking it up to about 3,000 square feet. And I think the question a lot of fans want to know is the timeline. When, when is your estimate that this is going to be all done? Timeline really is September 1st, our first home game. So we're pushing to make sure that the game day experience when you're in the stadium will be complete. The new video board will be up. The, the seating will be in place. Uh, I don't know the exact date of the first 19 game, but that would be the, the west side. So. Well, Dan, lots to look forward to. I know I'm excited. I'm sure the fans are excited. Lots of Liberty football to look forward to in this coming fall. Guys. Thank you, Bobby. More football news. This coming from north of the border. Two former Flames have re-signed to remain in the CFL. Kevin Fogg has inked a new one-year contract with the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. Fogg has excelled in Winnipeg the past two seasons, picking off six passes and providing a threat in the return game. Meanwhile, offensive lineman Hunter Stewart signed with the only team he's ever known, the BC Lions. This will be his fifth season with the club that drafted him in the first round back in 2013. Congrats and good luck to both of these. Former Flames, eh? Yeah. Well, turning our attention to basketball, the Lady Flames riding a seven-game win streak travel to Radford to take on the preseason number one pick in a battle of the Big South's hottest two teams. Foul trouble would be the name of the game in this matchup. Not even midway through the first quarter, 
Kian Green would receive her second foul of the game, giving her a seat on the old bench. That would enable Radford Janela White to take over. White would have a career day, scoring 20 points and also gathering a season-high 17 rebounds. The Flames would make a game of it in the fourth quarter. Kian Green would score eight in the final frame, cutting the deficit to single digits, but RU Spaniard Claudia Cavedo would drain a back-breaking three with 4.10 left, remaining to just seal Liberty's fate. Liberty would drop this game, although having a higher field goal percentage. The biggest difference, though, came at the foul line, where Radford went 15 of 24, and Liberty connected on only three of five attempts. Well, this loss opens up the door for Radford, only sitting one game back of the Flames in the standings. Now, we'll take a look here, big picture. Liberty remains first by one game. Tied for second are Radford and UNC Asheville, the two lone teams that have defeated Liberty this season. They are followed by High Point and then the rest of the conference who have sub-500 records. Meanwhile, over on the men's side, Liberty hosting Gardner-Webb, trying to play their way into a top six seed in the conference to avoid having to play in the first round of the Big South Tourney. We have a Scotty James sighting. Oh, yeah. James, the vicious throw down on the alley-oop. He finished with 14-9. The real story offensively, though, was true freshman Elijah Cuffey. Not only did he score a career-high 15, he also chipped in with five assists, four rebounds. You might say he's a well-rounded player. This will be just a three-point ball game with under two to play, but Liberty's three-point king, Ryan Kim Wright, delivering the dagger, one of his three triples on the evening, and Liberty would close this one out by the final of 77-65. The Flames with 17 assists, only eight turnovers, and head coach Richie McKay liking his team's attention to detail. I just think for our guys, winning the game one possession at a time is is critical and I think we're slowly but surely showing the maturation that that's kind of our commitment and we forget sometimes but uh, the the longer our season goes I think the better we get at it. Well the very best sports broadcasters are the ones that welcome you in the ones that call a game in such a way that you feel like you're right there with them and many times if you listen long enough you begin to feel like you even know that person even though you've never met. Well, if you're a Liberty Flames fan, perhaps you feel that way about Alan York, the voice of the Flames, a man whose passion for what he does is evident to all who hear him. And welcome inside our uh, Liberty Flames Sports Network studios tonight for our final radio show of the football season. Liberty football winning this past Saturday over Presbyterian College. And uh, look forward to next year's <laughs> FBS schedule, which begins September 1st against Old Dominion. I'm Alan York. I'm the football and men's basketball radio broadcaster for Liberty University. Growing up around Tobacco Road, uh, you were around a lot of schools. Of course, in North Carolina at that time, not any pro sports. So you saw Duke, North Carolina, Wake Forest, Appalachian, NC State. You would hear a lot of games on the radio. And Bob Harris at Duke, Woody Durham at uh, North Carolina. Gene Overby at Wake Forest, and you kind of live that theater of the mind through them as you kind of analyzed and watched and uh, followed the games. I did go to Guilford College in Greensboro and played football and baseball there, and it was really then that I decided, okay, I'm not going to make money doing playing for a living, so what else could I do? And I always enjoyed being kind of behind the scenes, uh, and so at Guilford, I started doing public address announcing as a freshman. From there, I uh, just had an itch that was insatiable. Reminder again, Liberty Men's Basketball tomorrow at Wake Forest at 7 o'clock. Have a great night, everybody. First thing I say is that it, it's, 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 it's kind of hard for me to answer because it's not really work to me. It's a labor of love. When you can find something you do and have a passion for it, you don't mind pouring hours and hours and hours and hours of prep work, whether it be handwriting your charts or typing them in, you never really stop preparing. Um, but anybody can print off a stat sheet on a, from a school's website. Jeff Clark in the jump circle, ball tap and the tip controlled by Wake Forest. But what you're not gonna find on a lot of websites is what are their stories? And beyond calling the play-by-play, -play, I enjoy getting to know the stories of these kids away from the field. Ryan Kimbright, Ryan, how you doing here tonight? Somebody can listen to our broadcast and say, wow, I didn't know that about them. Um, it, it makes our job worth it and uh, gives other people a reason to listen because of the stories I think uh, that they'll learn when they listen to it. Checo, left wing, pull up three, in and out. James rebound, put back, good. Wow. And one. That was a big time put back right there. And for me, being a former athlete, 
I think one of the other reasons I got into it is because you're not playing anymore. You're still living vicariously through all the players. It doesn't matter um, who's doing what. Backdoor pass to Williams. Draws a double team out to Kim Wright, right wing three. Yes! Timeout, Wake Forest. Good look by Isaiah Williams not to force it on the inside. Yes. Kim Wright wide open on the arc. Cavill, no shot left corner. McDowell for a three. <laughs> it's a big one. You still kind of feel like you are, you know, running a, a sweep to the right or flying down the lane to do a slam dunk, even though you're the one sitting behind uh, the bench, you know, calling the game. Just hearing comments from fans, win or lose, hey, thank you for taking me through the ride tonight. And when we get those comments, again, in radio, sometimes you have the ratings, sometimes you don't. But if you get a text or an email from somebody or even a social media post now, hey, I tuned in, thank you for that. Hey, if we can make one fan happy at the end of the day, we've done our job. And this ball game hey. is over, 79-66. And we can light them up here tonight in the Twin City. Knowing that we helped a couple of people uh, process the information and, and enjoy the broadcast. Number one, win or lose, if they didn't enjoy the broadcast, we didn't do our job. And so at the end of the day, that's what makes me happy when I know that they were tuning in and they're going to tune in again because of the enjoyment they had listening to Liberty Flames Athletics. Well, we have mentioned that this is the year Coach Richardson believes her ladies will turn the corner and start their ascent into the elite teams of the NCAA. Well, if their start to the season is any indication, we are in for a treat. The Flames have started off with a 5-0 record and have been led by the stellar play of Julia DiMartino. DiMartino went 2-0 with an ERA of zero, also added on a save, and if that wasn't enough, she gathered 21 Ks and held opponents to a batting average of just .083. Whoa. Offensively, this team does not seem to have a soft spot in the lineup as well, but sparkling so far has been Autumn Bishop, who has already accumulated seven runs and four RBIs while batting over 400. Fun stuff there on the diamond with the Lady Flames. Now we turn to hockey. They're putting in the finishing touches on their season, and we're hoping to strengthen their placement in the national rankings with a strong showing over the Alabama Frozen Tide. Game one, Star Wars night, and the Flames would blow the doors off the LaHaye Ice Center in the first period of play. LU would go on to score five goals, none nicer than a beauty by Cole Gammer, who wheeled past the tie defense and slipped it past the goaltender. Flames Kirk Candy gets his 400th win, Liberty winning 7-2. Game two be much similar story with the Flames hammering Alabama 11-2, sweeping the weekend series. Well, coming up, Matt sits down with first-year men's tennis coach Derek Schwant to hear about his background in the sport and his philosophy on the game. Plus, we bring you the top three athletes of the week in Warm Hot and Fuego. Game On's coming right back. We the people, we are innovators, dreamers, leaders. Yeah, we feel pain. We get tired, but it won't stop us. God's call is our pursuit and we will champion his name. Welcome to Liberty University. We are so glad that you are here. We hope that while on campus, you will experience God's goodness and recognize His abundant blessings and faithfulness. From our thriving academics with over 200 programs and our close-knit community to our state-of-the-art facilities and residence halls, you will see that the Lord is integrated into each part of this university. Fun and excitement also await you here as you attend football games, basketball games, concerts, campus community, convocation three times each week, and much more while developing relationships that will last a lifetime. Each of us has a different path during our time here, but we have at least one thing in common. 
not leaving this university the same as when we came. I love this school. I love this school. I love this school. And I hope you will too. Welcome home. Welcome home. Welcome home. So I grew up in a Christian home. I was just kind of wishy-washy doing uh, the Christian kid sort of thing uh, up through 11th grade where I had a friend uh, basically convert out of Christianity. It rocked my world a little bit. I wasn't exactly sure that people could actually do that. So it kind of put me on a little bit of a quest for truth for myself. I went to a, a Christian concert and there was a tent sponsored by Liberty. And he was like, you could sign up for this scholarship drawing that we have. As I signed up for the scholarship, I myself sent a prayer up, and a couple of songs later, they announced that I had won a $16,000 scholarship. I'd always kind of wanted to be an RA, and as I stepped into the role of prayer leader, it seemed logical to progress to another level, uh, to a spiritual life coach and then to president assistant. Uh, my experience at Liberty has been uh, a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Yeah, I wouldn't, wouldn't trade it for the world. Welcome back to Game On. Spring sports are starting to get going, and that includes tennis, where the Lady Flames are off to a strong start. The women have won four straight matches, the most recent two being shown on your screen right now. On the 11th, Liberty destroyed both Troy and Shaw by the finals of 7-zip. The Lady Flames have started the spring season with a 4-3 mark. As for the Liberty men, they followed up a win over USC Upstate with a loss to the reigning NCAA champs in UVA. The loss dropped the Flames' record to 3-5 on the young season. Well, speaking of the Liberty men's tennis program, they're led by first-year head coach Derek Schwant. His playing and coaching resume is an impressive one, and so too is his attitude about this sport. I found that out firsthand as I caught up with him for our latest edition of Go Talks. Coach, thanks so much for coming by. We Absolutely. really appreciate it. Good to finally meet you, get to know you a little bit since you've uh, just come here to Liberty, going into your first season. First, talk to me a little bit about a tennis. Where did that passion come from? Was that, were you always just a tennis guy from a young age or did you play yeah. other sports as well? Great question. So my parents got me out there when I was five or six. Wow. They were in the uh, Borg, you know, Agassiz, Sampras early yeah. era, and they, they got the bug. And um, I started, you know, I, I was in ice hockey, baseball, but something about tennis, I think it was the the satisfaction of getting a win when it was when it's you out there. Sure, um, I love team sports as well, but something about tennis grabbed me from a young age. You went on had a great career at Richmond collegiately, yeah. and then you played professionally mm -hmm. for how many years were you doing that? About three years. Okay. It was an amazing opportunity to travel the world, uh, doing what I love, and uh, you know financially it's tough unless you're in that top sure. hundred, top two hundred. Really tough to make a living, but I did it as long as I could. My parents were very supportive. And, um, you know, I was teaching lessons on the side, yeah. just trying to figure it out. But that was a great experience to really get the most out of my game and to see what that top level looks like and, and uh, to experience that level. Not many people get the chance to travel the world playing a sport. What do you feel like you learned about yourself during that time and also about the sport that you now can use? Man, what a question. So uh, all along, like during that time, I knew in the back of my mind, I'm like, man, I'm going to coach someday. I knew I wanted yeah. to coach. So I was going to use this, all these battles that I was going through uh, to be able to relate to the players better. And uh, what I learned about myself, um, you know, tennis was my identity at that point in my life. Yeah. That, that, that's was, that was me. Um, you know, my, my self-worth came from tennis. And then what I learned is my self-worth doesn't come from tennis. It, it comes from a way deeper level, and um, but tennis is, is a tool and it's an avenue for us to, you know, live out our faith and live out, you know, our example to, to our team. So, man, I learned a lot, and uh, going through that and searching through that was a huge part of my life. I've seen on social media a lot of your posts. You talk a lot about about fighting, about uh -huh. having some fight. A lot uh -huh. of people probably think, you know, football, real physical a sport like that. That's where yeah. you know you got to fight. But in tennis, you talk about that a lot. Why is that word so important to you? Why do you use it so often? Man, you've done your homework on I it. I try. <laughs> you know, they, they pay me for this a yeah. little bit, yeah. <laughs> so um, we like to define fight on a deeper level. And tennis is a gladiator. It's a one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah. I'm a big boxing fan. In okay. boxing, it's okay. a similar. It's one-on-one. -on -one. 
Uh, in tennis, you don't get hit in the head, but you, get, <laughs> you hope uh, not. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but um, so defining fight, um, and this is not just a, a running through a wall, physically trying hard. It's a, it's a deeper level of are you making corrections during a point, after a point? Are you aware of your emotions? Are you managing your emotions? Are you just going off the handle and, and losing control? Yeah. Um, so that's what we're calling guys to over a long period. A tennis match could be two, three hours. Are you locking into a deep level of fight uh, for that whole time? And if and a fight for a six five guy and a fight for a five eight guy, those are different games. Yeah. So it looks different. Um, but you know, we really like to define that on a deep level. That's a really big piece of our culture. Your first collegiate head coaching job, mm -hmm. you are trying to put in your culture, your, your stamp on the program. Mm -hmm. How do you go about forming that? And what are some yeah. challenges to doing that? Yeah, what a question. So we, um, I'm not going in this on my own. And I spent nine years as an assistant at yeah. three different programs. So I've been able to pick and choose uh, what I like from each of those programs. And to be able to come to work and shape things and, and put my stamp on something is, is really such a fun thing. Yeah. Um, it's going to be a, a learning process as well. So. Um, yeah, I, I've got good mentors to reach out to. I've drawn from three different programs, and it's time to go. Tennis is, is your passion. It's your job. Mm -hmm. Outside of that, what do you do? What, what, what are your I, hobbies? What I, do you I think do I should have been a court? golfer. Is that I, right? I, 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 I love golf. Okay. Well, maybe you can get out and hit the <laughs> and, golf ball and, around uh, a little bit. Yeah, that will be great. Okay. And um, I'm a big music fan. I play okay. the guitar. Uh, I'm out of practice right now. But we, uh, <laughs> um, yeah, music and golf are two of my favorite hobbies okay. off, outside of the court. Well, Coach, we're so glad you're here at Liberty. Good luck here this season and uh, uh -huh. much success in the future. Thanks so much, yeah. Matt. Appreciate it. Yeah. All right. Thanks to Coach Swamp for sitting down with us. We do appreciate it. All right, time now for Warm, Hot, and Fuego. That's and right. Red. You might say it's Ladies' it Night. It could be. Or Ladies' Day, whenever you're yes. watching this. Yes. Of course, you can watch it on our website at any time, okay? <laughs> uh, Take a look at the ladies this yeah. week. They really stood out. Let's start with Warm and work your way through. I'm excited because oh, we got three new athletes that we have not had on the show okay. yet. So that's exciting because it kind of got like basketball a lot. You, you know, were getting like, bored? Is that what you're saying? A teeny bit. Okay. But it's nice to have some fresh blood on Absolutely. the show. We're going to start off here. Maria Medina. She is from Cumana, Venezuela. Beautiful this it's, time yeah, of year. Oh, it is gorgeous. I, yeah. That's the one thing I love about WEF is the fact that I get to like Google where they're from. It's almost like you get to go on vacation yeah, for a few know, moments. That is exactly it. Vacation is just a few clicks away. Yeah, I know. Man. I'm just looking there, sitting there. Matt thinks I'm yeah. doing work, and I'm just looking at pictures. <laughs> of their home. But nonetheless, she's like the north point of South America. This okay. place is beautiful. It's got mountains, it's got the beaches yeah. and all that. But, you know, what she's done, though, athletically, I guess we sure, should I get into that. Talk about that. 2 and 0 mark here as of late in singles and in doubles play. She took out the top seed of Troy, yeah. and, and it was a battle. 6 4, 5, 7, 6 3. Yeah. So she's come on here to the Flames, first year with the group, yeah. and is doing quite well. Yeah, welcome yeah. aboard. All yeah. right, from warm now, we go to hot. Well, we go down south south to up north, Tanner Elam. She is from Anchorage, Alaska. Land of the Midnight Sun. That's right. You know, okay. I was looking at pictures of that place too, and I never really had scoped out Anchorage. Yeah. Man, you got the mountains there and the yeah. water and the snow caps. It's just gorgeous. I'm, yeah. I'm telling you, I could move to Alaska. Let's take game well, on on the road. Okay, it's not that different from Canada. No, probably. yeah, it's, right that's in. very true, yeah. except that I think the sun stays up a little yeah. bit longer than I prefer. But she won both of her events as of late, the women's 500 and the 4x400 relay. And in the 500, she broke a Big South and Liberty record with a time of 1 minute, 12 seconds, 0.95. Yeah. And then her leg on the 4x400, it was 55.27 seconds. Yeah. So they won both. Wow. She has come on here last year, yeah. freshman of the year in the Big South, and she's having no sophomore slump. She's yeah. rolling. The pride of Anchorage. Yeah, yes. congrats to her. Great showing. Finally, now it leads up to this in Fuego. That's right. Who you got? We go from Venezuela yes. to Alaska, Alaska to now, Where are you taking Brockport, this now? Brockport, New York. We're going to call you Randa McNally. Yeah. That's going to be your <laughs> new nickname. Yeah. Julia DiMartino, this young lady. You know, I was looking up Brockport. Tell me. It's a village in the town of Sweden, New York, which is kind of interesting. complex okay, and stuff. Yeah. They call it the Victorian Village oh, on the Erie Canal. Sounds, nice. sounds like, like a lovely little yeah. place to be from. But she is going to be so good this year. I don't want to repeat the stats. We talked yeah. about them earlier, but man. She is just throwing some fire yeah. right now. Like, yeah. I think you saw her last year go through stretches, and I think consistency is the key for her to just have a year where she gets nationally recognized, sure. and I think this could be the season. You come in here, it's your junior year, you've had two years of experience, you kind of get the feel for the yeah. game and what it's like at the collegiate level, and now I think her next two seasons as a flame is just gonna be lights out, batters, don't yeah. even, you don't even need to come <laughs> up to the plate. Up. Just yeah. stay there in the dugout yeah. and, and hang out with your coach, and 
it's going to be a lot Absolutely. of fun to watch this year. Well, congrats to yeah. Julia on being in Fuego. Right? Yeah. Great job as always. We're not done just yet. <laughs> Stick around. You're going to want to see one of the great hockey celebrations in oh, recent yeah, history, oh, recent yeah. memory at least. Yeah. Stick with us. We'll come right back. Each morning begins around 7. I make breakfast for the kids and get them ready for the day. Mornings can be hectic as I'm running my business from home, and when the kids nap, it's the perfect time to work on my courses. By studying at Liberty University without set login times, I am able to craft my own schedule around what works best for my life. This flexibility allows me to work on my assignments during the day so I can spend time with my husband after he gets home from work. As a parent, I have to balance the week from my daughter's dance class to teaching ballet to church activities. Studying online has allowed me to invest in my education while being a strong example to my children. My name is Kimberly. I'm a mom, a business owner, and a Liberty University student. Every athlete has a story. Why do they strive? What drives them? Are they just doing this for a game? Or is it about how this struggle changes them? We are here to ask those questions. We are here to tell that story. We are Game On. Well, hey there, friends. Welcome back to Game On. You know, one fad that's going around the country currently is Star Wars night, and the Flames hockey team, they jumped on that train. Yeah, but not only did the Flames have a Star Wars-inspired jerseys, they also had Star Wars-inspired celebration. Yeah, right? that's that right, Matt. That, yeah. And this one, led by Captain Josh Hamilton, had perhaps one of the best sellies in the country, using the old force oh, push to knock back his teammates. Right. Now, this thing went viral yeah. on social media. Over a million and a half likes and just people watching yeah. this thing all over and over 130,000 views in Canada on TSN and their Instagram account alone. So one of the best celebrations uh, you're going to see. 130,000 Canadian is like, what, 100,000 U.S.? How does yeah, that well, work? Okay, right. yeah, That's exactly right. right. Yeah, great celebration, <laughs> absolutely. Hey, we're about out of time. Hit us up on social media, at GameOnLU, and you can like our stuff 130,000 times That'd if be you'd fantastic. like. We'd be okay with that. Yeah, that'd be great. And check out our website as well, GameOnLU.com. He's Rad. I'm Matt. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you right back here next week.